Okay, welcome back to Fitness Vaults for another episode. So we are super, super privileged today to be joined by KJ Sharp, current national downhill champion. So KJ, first of all, thank you for giving up your time and coming on to do an episode with us today. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Doing okay? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Good. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. I'm good. So yeah. <laughs> for those that won't have come across you before, do you just want to give a little bit of an introduction to your background, obviously your current standing in your sport and especially how this last season's gone because we've had a pretty good season, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm a mountain biker. Um, I started when I was like 21. So that was what, six years ago? I'm oh, so old now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess I did enduro to start with and then switched over to downhill mountain biking. Mm. So I've been doing that for like two, two years now. Well, I've done, this is my first downhill season of mm. racing. Um, and I guess now I'm, it sounds really strong, but I'm probably the, well, should be the fastest woman in the UK. Well, so, you're a um, national champ, so yeah. that's <laughs> so, <something>. <laughs> The race results say it, so. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um so yeah that's that's pretty much me and what I do now so, so yeah. when, you know when we because how many years ago was it now that we did the our masters together up at Beckett so it was about five years ish I think so yeah so you were doing en enduro at that point then and not the downhill side of things yeah so those two years did you do it part-time or mm, no I think I did mine full-time so it was just the one year I did mine so I did my part time, and it was two years. So the whole two years, I was racing world enduros. Yes. Yeah. Well, so hmm, it was too much. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it is a lot. So yeah. what what caused that sort of switch to the downhill from the enduro? Um, what's the, what's just, the difference between the two, just for people that won't know? Oh, uh, okay. So enduro is like, uh, it's technically a two day race, but you do. Two Two days practice so it's almost like a four-day race mm. um and it you kind of you do it's similar to downhill it's you get timed on the downhill sections but yeah. there's like maybe six stages six downhill stages throughout the day and mm. you have to climb to the top of each stage yeah. um so it's like potentially six mountains yeah. Or something in a day. It's just, just ridiculous. I remember, I remember you telling me that at Union being like, oh yeah, you, you have to get your own bike to the top of the mountain before yeah. you start as well. I was like, that just seems so unfair. Like that must take so much out of you. <laughs> Insane. So I did that for like two years and I was just like, I think by the end of the two years, we have doing the masters and I was working 30 hours a week. Mm. I was absolutely like done for. So I kind of fell out of love with mountain biking and took like two months off. And mm. then when I came back, I was like, oh, I just don't want to pedal anymore. So mm. then I just switched to downhill and yeah, I really don't pedal anymore. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> Free falling. Yeah. <laughs> but doing it well though. And you went, that switch then is at the, obviously it's a good decision given the recent season's results, but yeah, you were like, enjoying it more than you did with the Enduro. Yeah, I think I the best part about it is how specific you can be on your lines and like like mm. when you're racing downhill, it's one track. You get to practice that one track as much as you want. Yeah. And so it's like it's so specific. Like your riding has to be so spot on. Whereas with Enduro, you it's a bit messy and you you just ride in as fast as you can. Yeah. But kind of blindly. Yeah. Almost. So I quite like the how specific you can be and how like spot on you can be with all your lines and yeah 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 ocd kind of stuff yeah. a bit more sort of like uh like f1 and stuff in that sense and when you really have to know your lines and you have to know sort of where to go into the corners how to come out of them sort of how to position yourself like you said it becomes yeah. very very strategic doesn't it very very technical yeah definitely it ends up being like quite like there's a lot of gossip around the pits at races like what lands better and whatnot and you can like the mental game's so bizarre you almost have to like switch off from everyone and just concentrate on your own lines yeah but yeah, yeah. it's pretty fun yeah oh i can imagine i can imagine it's fun i can imagine it's also shit scary certainly the first <laughs> few times you do it like yeah. when you, when, again when you sort of because uh, i'd not come across it before certainly not watched it until um you were showing me when we were doing the masters and I remember, I think you sent me a link to one of your videos that had been filmed on like a head cam. 
And I remember yeah. watching that and I was literally like, this is the scariest thing I've ever watched in my life. <laughs> it's crazy i think the hard fit with because on gopros they're not really very good at seeing like they don't show how steep things are mm. at the gradient so i think it always looks so flat on a gopro and then when you actually because some some of the tracks that we've walked up like for world cups and stuff you can't really walk up them because they're yeah. so steep <laughs> so i think videos don't really do it justice but yeah, <laughs> yeah. So how do you sort of get into because obviously it's quite a unique sport it's not as uh it's not as general as like rugby or football or whatever it's like that so how do you how did you sort of get into it um i was thinking about this today um <laughs> i for me i got into it because obviously well my my family did it my dad's right. always done bikes and road trials bikes and whatnot mm. um he'd never really done downhill because uh, he always said it was too dangerous, which he's he's probably right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then my brother also rides as well. So I did it. I got into it because of that. But I was thinking like today, like, how do you get into a, a sport like that if you've yeah. you know, got no connections? And I think you just have to force yourself into the sport, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that, like ask me how how you get on with training and how you like how can you be that fast and how do you succeed and it's like well you just have to force yourself to succeed and force yourself to get into onto a bike and ride and mm -hmm. train it and stuff but yeah so I got into it through family pretty much so yeah. it was pretty easy for me yeah it's sort of a nice sort of transition for you really yeah exactly but it's my dad requires no requires no less work or anything like that to, certainly to get to the point that you have to now like yeah whether you whether you're around people that know the spot or not like it takes a, a hell of a lot of work to get to where you've got to now yeah I was thinking when I was thinking about it today I was like it's quite overwhelming how much you have to like really be persistent mm. to get into the sport but, but then it'd be like I think it's similar to any other sport like if you want to be top of the game in tennis you just have to be persistent and just keep yeah. turning up and and then people just accept you, that you're there, don't they, after a while? Yeah, yeah. They that? just accept that's just what you do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But initially, it's quite probably quite scary. But luckily, I had family that were just like, oh, I'll just follow you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, because I imagine the... Obviously, I mean, as obviously, we had a bit this season, didn't we? But uh, the injury risk for downhill is going to be a lot higher than, I would imagine, most other sports, to be fair. Yeah, I think it's like a very big topic on how ridiculously injury prone we all are. Yeah, yeah. Like when I try to keep up on social media throughout summer, mm. just kind of like post and go kind of scenario, because you just see so many, like obviously, you know, so many riders on there and you have riders coming down every week and you're like, oh God, it's yeah. going to be me next. Like, like it just happens though, doesn't it? But I think as well, like, like when I was started riding, I just thought I could do everything. So I was just a bit silly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when you mainly get injured and mainly crash. Whereas now I already know where my speed limit is. And if mm -hmm. I'm going to do a, a race run or, or like a practice run at race speed, I make sure I know the track before I do it. And I'm like fully prepared for it. Whereas before yeah. I would have just gone for it. So it's that's very rarely that injury actually happens anymore. And if yeah. it does, it's like a freak accident. Yeah. That's just, I suppose that's wisdom that comes with experience, isn't it? <laughs> no yeah. one, isn't it? If, if I could like tell myself that five years ago, it would have been so much better. But yeah, yeah. That's but just I suppose really good, that's, that's going to be a necessary period to go through of just having that attitude of just, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to see what I can do and how far I can push myself because you're only going to then learn your limits and get to the point you are doing now by going through that process. Yeah, exactly. It's so true. So yeah. sad, but true. <laughs> <laughs> so, sort of predating uh, the biking, then, what was, did you grow up doing any other sports? Or, because I know you saw, obviously, uh, with Chris's gym, in, quite into cro the CrossFit style of training that goes pretty hand in hand with the biking side of things. So, have you, has that always been quite a big part of your sort of fitness life? No, not really. <laughs> no, is it just there to accommodate the performance with biking? Um, yeah, so I started at the CrossFit gym when I started riding, 
Um, and then I didn't really start working to, with Chris until a year after. And it's only through, like I met him through, because it's his CrossFit gym, so I met him through that. And mm. then I realized like a year up into riding that I needed like specific help with my fitness. Because mm. I was just going like full steam ahead every day. And then, which you can't really do, can you? You have to progress yeah. everything and just, and you can't plan your own training and you can't really plan your own nutrition. Like it's just mm. oh, horrendous. But before that I was, I used to play hockey at school and mm. I think I, I like got to the last step before being on the, in, uh, in the English, England squad or something. Right. I can't remember. Going. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, well, I don't really want to do this. So I don't know why I'm <laughs> yeah, like, it was a lot of effort. All the way to <laughs> national level and then be yeah. like, uh, do you know what? I'm not bothered about this actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just don't think I enjoyed it so much. Um, and then at uni I did boxing and I think I was, I think I was British university champion in, in my second year. <laughs> um, yeah. Is there anything like, that you've not just got to the very top of and just been I like? <laughs> I think I'm just like so fierce when I start something mm. that you just end up, I don't know, it's hilarious. But I didn't really enjoy boxing either because it just, it hurts, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah but you'd think you think you'd know that going into it that this is probably going to sting a little bit <laughs> well I think before I started I was like I can handle I can handle being punched in the face but I really can't <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle it all <laughs> um so yeah so then I finished uni and all those sports weren't really on you know like you have to, I have to if I wanted to play hockey I'd have to drive to Leeds and it mm. wasn't on my doorstep so, and all my friends and everyone that I grew up around were bikers. So I was like, well, okay, we'll start biking. Yeah. Which I think my brother finds it really annoying because he's ridden all his life. <laughs> and like, he's, she's already faster. It's so annoying. <laughs> what is wrong with her? And I think he had, when he was growing up, he had dreams to be like a downhill champ and whatnot. Yeah. And just like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You, you can be the smug one around the uh, table at Christmas dinner this year then be like, right, how's yeah. everyone years gone? <laughs> uh, yeah, literally. <laughs> it must be, it must, I mean, although, yeah, I mean, obviously there'll be a uh, level of, maybe not jealousy, but obviously envy with that, but he must also be incredibly sort of proud as well. Oh, yeah, it's just sibling rivalry. That's yeah. all it is. <laughs> There's things that he can do that I'm like, damn it. <laughs> yeah, do you know, I think it's the younger sibling thing though, like, I think younger siblings tend to outperform older siblings. And I think it's yeah. just that that drive to want to prove yourself to your older siblings and want to outdo them. I think so. And I think as well, like when you're growing up like this, like when I was riding with Sam and my dad for when I first started, they were obviously really like way more better than I was. So you have to just keep up with them. So you yeah. learn so much quicker, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, just, um, it was interesting what you just taking it back a second you mentioned about obviously not doing your own training and your own programming and I was having this conversation uh with someone the other day who's a coach themselves because you as well do coach on the side and do help people from a is it just a nutritional basis that you work with people on or is it both nutrition and training both I both. prefer the nutrition but yeah I yeah, do both. yeah yeah and um because I've I'd had the exact same thing and it's the exact reason I got my own coach for my own training in the first place is that you just tend to find that when you are working with people on those areas and you're helping people with their nutrition and their training, like your own stuff just gets pushed to the back completely, doesn't it? Yeah, mm, yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it did for me. <laughs> I guess it does, but also like, I felt like when I was planning my own training, I was an own nutrition. I was so overcomplicating it. Like mm. it was just ridiculous. And yeah. then I would just didn't stick to it neither. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, so that was sort of similar for me was I was never, when I was doing my own, I was never not eating well. I was never sort of never didn't have a goal or I was never not going to the gym or training, but it was very much just, I was either not being specific enough and I was just like I haven't got time this week I'll just go through the motions do what I need to do or I'd be over analyzing it and second guessing everything and it just got to the point I was like do you know what I just want someone else to take charge of this and then I can just be told what to do and just crack on with it it's literally so much easier isn't it yeah yeah it's so good yeah yeah and I think it, it works well that you've obviously got 
Chris for the S and C side of things. And then obviously myself with the nutrition that you can literally just be like, right, what do I need from you? What are we doing here? And we can, you yeah. can get on with it straight away and just, and just purely focus on, on the biking side of things. It literally is like that in all aspects. So like even, um, the, I see a physio fee. I think you know her. Yes. Yes. Um, I started seeing her since my shoulder injury yeah. and she's a, it's similar with her she just tells me what to do and I do it and that's yeah. that I don't need to know why yeah. I'm doing it or like overcomplicate it or anything it's just literally like okay that's what she's telling me telling me to do I'll do that yeah and just get and on it, with it it works that's actually just gonna... to fee because that's worked really well really quickly hasn't it we were talking about you yeah before. yeah she's so good I think she was a bit like I think a lot of the time like physio when you're a physio a lot of people just don't do the exercises do they yeah oh, so when yeah. I came back so, so when I came back like two weeks later, she was just like, "Oh, it actually worked!" <laughs> like, <first laughs> I was like, "Well, I've done it every day." <laughs> yeah, I have that because um, obviously with so like with Fee and then my other half Sophie working for Regen that Fee also works for. So I sort of speak to the guys in that physio practice quite a lot, and they all just say the same thing: like you'll get the same people coming back with the same complaints, like every other yeah. month and it's like well have you done your rehab and they're like oh well, I, I you know it started to feel better so I stopped or I never started it in the first yeah. place it's like, well what do you expect <laughs> yeah like this week I saw her I saw her yesterday and she was like I don't even think we need to look at your shoulders this week she was mm. like we could probably just like sort your legs out and just like obviously after all the squatting and we're doing Ooh. so mm. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it's the same with nutrition isn't it it's like whatever you tell me to do I'm like okay we'll yeah. do it <laughs> don't ask questions just do it <laughs> you really just get on with it and that's yeah and that's obviously that's where your athlete mindset comes into it and it'll be you know big part of the reason why you are so successful with the downhill stuff why you have been successful with hockey and boxing is you are very much just a okay this is what we need to do and let's just get on with it and get it done yeah literally no, there's no point in overcomplicating it it just gets too much and then you give up won't, won't you yeah exactly but, exactly yeah. Um, so over because obviously you've been working as a coach yourself for quite a few years now so like is there anything that you've come across that is sort of a modern misconception that you would say around nutrition or training or just something outright ridiculous that you've come across over the years whether it's you've noticed people doing or advice people have been given you know like diets and stuff like that I think the biggest thing that I always I like I still I think well I still ponder over it all the time. I did it in my, I did a systematic review for my master's in it mm. as well. And it's how much like females just want to be ripped. And it's just like, yeah. unless you're doing it for bodybuilding and a competition, it's really not good for you. No. And I just don't understand why females still like, there's just nothing wrong with being a bit like, like not chubby but having some weight on you like it looks so much better and you're so much healthier yeah but that's probably the biggest thing that hits me every time I hear someone like going on about how ripped they want to be or see someone that, a female that's that ripped because mm. men can get away with it a lot like oh yeah yeah a so lot easier more than females whereas yeah. females like the hormones are just oh it just goes too far doesn't it yeah, that, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, it affects both males and females in regards to hormones, but when it comes to getting that back after that period of time, like men have it a hell of a lot easier. Men have it a lot easier in pretty much every aspect when it comes to health and fitness. There's no, like, yeah, there is good. no two ways around it. We, <laughs> yeah. we, we literally do, but certainly for women, and it's like, I know exactly what you mean because I've had the same conversations when I've had people come to me and they'll have like a photo of some, instagram athlete or model or someone that's really really lean yeah. and they're like oh i want to look like that and i'm like right well let's be realistic here that's probably not going to happen and the chances are that person that you're idolizing there she probably isn't even having a cycle when she looks like that so yeah something that you value is your health or potentially wanting kids in the near in your, the next few years i'm like something doing something like that going to that extreme is just not going to make you feel any better whatsoever and i think as well like like Obviously, I don't know what men find attractive in terms of females or like mm. what anyone finds attractive, but I just don't think it's attractive to be like that. Mm. Like, I just like, obviously, if you want to be like that grand, but like, if you're doing it for aesthetic reasons, 
I'm pretty sure people will be more attracted to you if you're like quite voluptuous and yeah as a female yeah. point of view yeah. but I don't yeah. know what people are attracted to so <laughs> well like I said that's co- yeah I mean that's subjective isn't it and that's going to change from person yeah, exactly. to person but I think I think generally I think you are dod on and I remember going to uh, years ago I went to a body power expo and we met a few of the at that time uh, a few professional bodybuilders and I can't remember which one it was we met. He was a physique competitor. And at the time we met him, he was quite, he wasn't very lean. He was quite big, um, had yeah. quite a bit of body fat. And he was literally saying, he was like, like, I think, I don't know whether he's still with that person, but he was like his partner at that time. He was like, she prefers me so much more when I've got more weight on me than when I'm super, yeah. super lean. He was like, nobody oh, yeah. finds it attractive. Like it, it's the the only people way that find it oppressive, impressive are the people that want to get lean themselves. Like that is literally it. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely the same the other way around. Like females, I'm pretty sure prefer like a bit of chub chub. <laughs> <They're> completely <laughs> ripped. <that's> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, just like meals are more interesting then as well. Yeah, imagine, exactly. Exactly. imagine having a ripped diet all the time. Oh, it was so stressful. <laughs> oh yeah, and it's boring. And it's like for like because obviously I've done that a couple of times, and like I enjoy doing that process for the challenge of doing it, and just for like to set myself mini goals every now and again. But it is in no yeah. way sustainable whatsoever. It's not. Enjoyable. I think like the way you do it is like, you know, afterwards you, you program yourself to make sure that you're being as healthy as possible to mm. get back to normal. Whereas yeah. a lot of people just want to get to be ripped and then they don't know what to do after that. And yeah. it just, that's yeah. the part where it's like, Oh God, you know, anything could, it could go really wrong here from here yeah. onwards it needs to be like properly programmed and whatnot, but hundred percent, because once you get to that position of being super lean, your body's in such a, a sensitive position to regain body fat quickly because it has been deprived for so long. Um, yeah. because you've been restricting for so long, your the likelihood that you're going to want to sort of binge or just have, you know, take away after take away after that and make up for all that lost time is just so high that if you don't have that plan, if you don't have something laid out, I've seen it happen with people before, not with clients, but with uh, like people that have competed, but have literally regained like up to 10 kilos within like three days after doing a show or a photo shoot. Yeah, because they've just had no plan and they've just gone straight back to normal. And there definitely does need to be a degree of, so I always say to people, if I take anyone on and they want to do a photo shoot, for example, like I'm all for doing that, but it's very much like, this is what it's going to take. It's mm-hmm. going to be enjoyable, but it's not necessarily going to be healthy. And no. you will have to stay with me from a coaching point of view for at least four weeks afterwards so that we can get you back to some level of normality without yeah. it being dangerous. And there's just for that, sure. it needs to be that understanding there. So, so that it isn't affecting health long-term. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, but yeah, I think that's one of the main things that well, always blows my mind whenever I hear people talking about it. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. interesting, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, massively, and it is. It's and the, social media is massively to blame for that. Um, oh yeah, if not completely to blame nowadays, just because of that misconception that it puts out that you see the pe- all those people that are that lean on what looks like a day to day basis, and it makes it look realistic or makes it look attainable, and it's just like. But also, like, if I see pictures of like a woman on social media that's looking ripped and like, you know, like stood up, she's normally stood up on her toes, normally yeah. like you know, stretched out, like, best angle that you could get yeah. on the camera. And I'm yeah. pretty sure if she sat down on the sofa hunched over with a cup of tea or something, she would not look like that. <laughs> That's the photo we want to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, put it into perspective. <laughs> yeah. But it's true. It is, it is all angles. It is all positioning and angles and lighting that can make an absolute world of difference to how someone looks. Sure. I have quite a small bum, but sometimes if you put it in the right angle, it's, it looks good. <laughs> but in general, it's no. <laughs> so. I mean, and that's the great thing, obviously, as well, with like the um, having downhill biking as a sport is like from a nutrition point of view. Yes, we obviously we have a plan, we have a structure, but we also have a lot of flexibility within that as well. Like we don't have to be super, unless we wanted to make a certain weight for a race, like we don't have to be super, super strict and we can be very, very relaxed on a day to day basis. Yeah, I think I'm so lucky that I'm in a sport where I don't actually have to be aesthetically pleasing, which is so mm. nice. Yeah. Um, so more weight, the better, I think, in downhill. Well, yeah, yeah. For, yeah, certainly from a gravity point of view, you'll move, you'll move quicker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's crazy. 
all the men that so the guys that arrive here tend to be like 10 to 15 kilograms heavier than me mm. and honestly on the flat like well on the flatter sections they just absolutely run away from it they don't even pedal and i have to pedal to keep up it's insane <laughs> so annoying <laughs> frustrating <laughs> are these are these the ones that you still beat by the time you get to the end of the race so <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> Shh, don't tell me <laughs> don't want to upset anyone <laughs> no we won't say any more on that <laughs> so then flipping that on its head what would you say is some of the better things about the fitness industry as a whole that you've come across over the years or just some of the things that you sort of enjoy about it as a whole um i think like um so I go to a CrossFit gym. Mm. Um, so I think the community of that is because before I used to just go to a general gym and I think it's quite hard to, it's quite scary going to a, a gym mm. on your own, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it, um, yeah. It can certainly, if you're not used to it, it can be very intimidating. Yeah. And you don't, it's really hard to meet people mm. as well. Like I've, I've used to go to the gym at uni all the time and yeah. Well, not all the time, but pretty much most most days. And I don't think I made one friend. And that was over <laughs> like three years. <laughs> and I don't think I made one friend from the gym, which is just like, it's a uni. Everyone socializes at uni. <laughs> yeah, it's bizarre. Isn't it? um, if you compare that to like a CrossFit gym, you get to know like pretty much everyone within the first few weeks. And everyone just speaks to you. Like even today, like I've been to that gym for four years now. And even today I met new people and I was like, like yeah. you it's flipping it's so sociable which is nice yeah. um so I think that's what I like about the fitness industry like it's it's a good way of socializing without having to get like drunk or yeah. you know going yeah. out till early hours of the morning so that's yeah. quite nice really yeah 100 yeah um I agree with that completely because it's sort of it's finding those people that you've got that common ground with and that you yeah. can sort of relate to and you're all sort of whether it might be a slightly different goal but you're all working towards a similar thing um, yeah exactly. and like you said you're Everyone's not then forced involved. to go out drinking or whatever it is just to sort of socialize and, and have that sense of community yeah exactly I think it's quite nice like most people probably aren't like this but I'm quite a loner <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite nice to be like Okay, that's socializing for today, done, tick. Yeah. Now you can go home and be alone again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I get what you mean with that a lot because I mean, any of my mates would say it to me as well. Like I am not the, a sociable person at all. Like I'll, uh-huh. I'll see them maybe once every three months at the minute, maybe three or four months, which is nothing at all. And it's not because I don't want to see them because I love it. I love spending time with all the seeing them as much as I can, but it's because generally what it tends to happen is meeting at a pub or going out for a meal or going out for a drink. And yeah. like, it doesn't fit into what I, what I tend to do and how I like yeah. to tend to spend my time. So it does make me somewhat of a loner when it comes to <laughs> my group of mates as well. Uh, so I, yeah, I get what you mean with that but that's, there's nothing wrong with that as well. Like obviously everyone's got their own priorities. Everyone's got their own lifestyles. And certainly in the case of you, like you are a national level, international level athlete. Like it has to come first. Yeah. It has to I be. I think it is, that's the case. So if you are like very focused on your fitness, mm. you are going to have to like, um, you know, like cut out some of the drinking and cut out going out late at night. Like now yeah. that we're back in the office, season I'm really trying hard to make sure I'm in bed by half 10 every night yeah. so it's like if I go out for a meal on Saturday night I want to be home by half nine and then ready for bed yeah which sounds really strict but I want to be up in the morning to go ride in yeah and I want a fresh morning it's just whereas if I was going out like everyone knows if you have a bottle of what well <laughs> what I did with my four weeks off just drank red wine <laughs> like, <laughs> There was no chance I was going to have an effective training month. No. Like, no way. <laughs> so. But there were a few holidays and stuff within that as well, so it was well worth Yeah, but you can't train and live a lifestyle like that. No no way. Like No, no. There has, like I said, there has to be a, a sort of a degree of sacrifice for yeah. certainly yeah. to get to where you are as well. But then I suppose at the same time, you I don't know, you might do, but you probably don't even view it as that much of a sacrifice because you probably I think initially yeah initially it's probably a shock but now it's Mm. like I love it so much that it's definitely not a sacrifice yeah it's worth that sort of trade isn't it worth that sort of swap yeah exactly so So, 
Have you had any, you don't have to answer this, but I do tend to ask everyone over the years, have you had any like embarrassing moments in the gym or sort of on the bike or anything like that? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> have I? People have not answered that as well in the past, so you don't actually have to answer that. I think everyone lets out like a, a mini trump when they do their squats every now and again. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> like if people say that they don't do that, they're definitely lying. <laughs> Oh yeah, I would agree. I think uh, I've not had anyone say that, but I would agree that most, but I've, a lot of people have done a lot worse than that when they're squatting as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, otherwise, at national, uh, this is probably too much information. <laughs> at national, <laughs> we'll say it, and if you want to cut it out, then that's fine. <laughs> no, it's up to you. We'll let, tell us what it is and we'll decide after. <laughs> at national champs, I was so like, not overly nervous, but you obviously, you get mm. nervous before race and I always get like well I need to go to the toilet a lot more mm. when I'm nervous and I was stood at the top and there was no toilets and I definitely needed to go have a number two <laughs> so I just went in the bushes but I think that's quite normal for mountain bikers to do anyway <laughs> I would imagine but so it wasn't really, it wasn't really I, you know when you like you come to the end like winning a national champs so you like yeah this should feel great but I just nearly pooped my pants <laughs> that's not cool <laughs> so yeah well, that's probably I'm pretty sure Paula Radcliffe did the same thing in one of her runs didn't she yeah so... So if, if she is doing it it's fine isn't exactly. it exactly <laughs> when needs must you know you can't, yeah. you can't help it it's nature <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. No, having yeah, have, I mean, I worked in the gym for about six years ish myself, and every now and again, you, you'd get someone, you'd see someone squatting, and then all of a sudden, you just see them leave the gym like halfway through the <laughs> work. You're like, I know exactly what's happened there. <laughs> it's more embarrassing if you leave. You should just own it and just be like, yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you just own it, it'd be like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So. How was this, obviously, the success of this past season? And with it being your first proper downhill season as well and, and it being so successful, how has that sort of set you up from a mindset point of view for the next season to come? Obviously, we've only just hit off season, so it's, it's a way off yet. But how are you feeling for this next season coming up? And now I'm feeling great. Initially, I was <laughs> overwhelmed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Initially, I was like, oh, God. You know, like, it's like a, you've set the line now. Mm. There you go. Well done. You, you just... feel like there's an expectation sort of a pressure now. <laughs> Initially there was, but then, like, oh, like I speak to a counsellor and you just process things through your head mm. and make sure. Because you just putting, that, putting pressure on yourself is never going to help, mm. I don't think. Like, you need no. to just relax, enjoy it. The more you enjoy it and the less pressure you have, like, the more more likely you are going to win um yeah. yeah so initially I was like oh my like I don't know if I want to like I just I, was like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore <laughs> and like I um I just got a new manager and he's literally within two weeks of starting to work with me I just turned around I was like I don't want to do this <laughs> and he's just like what I've only been working with you for like two weeks <laughs> what's going on <laughs> yeah but it can be very overwhelming though I imagine yeah I just don't think like with it being my first downhill season season I didn't really expect to be at the top I thought I would like this would be the season for me to start like climbing ladders mm. which it was on a world level but on a national level it was a case of like I should have been winning every race mm. um I just didn't know that stuff the season I didn't know that until halfway through mm. and really even on the national champs race like on the day I was just like oh well you know like I don't know what's going to happen and like I had a crash um on my practice run in the morning of mm. the like, before the my race run and bent my bars so like my bars were bent in my race and I was just like oh it doesn't really matter like it's the first time I've done national champs whatever yeah so then you're like so then when I came first, I think that was from that point onwards, I was just so overwhelmed by everything. Yeah, yeah. Which is probably why I hadn't like crashed it at World Champs and got an injury because I was probably too overwhelmed mm. regardless. Whereas if I went into World Champs relaxed and happier with everything, mm. I probably would have been fine. Yeah. But yeah. then 
I think I just needed that month off to process process everything, get my my perspectives right, and then I think just starting the off season in the right mindset is like spot on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I yeah. think like as well with obviously like the nationals with you crashing in the test and sort of bending your handlebars did you potentially go into that race and being like well obviously it was the first one but sort of being like well my bars are sort of bent so I'm not expecting anything here anyway so we'll just we'll just go and see what I can do I was actually a bit like I can't push it too hard because it could like once your bars are bent you could easily snap them yeah and then like 10 seconds before my run I was like okay like, here we go, <laughs> just go for it. and just went for it and I was like if they you know if they snap they snap like at least I know I've tried yeah so yeah. luckily they didn't snap which was nice yeah and they went straight in the bin but <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just taking that pressure off yourself and, and that's just going to come with experience though like I said it's the first season like it's just going to be experience and getting used to it and just work yeah. actually, I suppose suppose sort of learning how you deal best with that sort of stuff really yeah I think the main lesson is to make sure I've got a spare handlebar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like more for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, it's all a learning process, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. massively. Yeah, it's yeah. Mass- massively a learning process. Like you said, with each season, you're just going to get more and more experience and you're going to get more and more confidence and, and be happier and happier. It's certainly going to be a exciting season ahead to see to see what goes on. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. You should get stronger squats first, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, that's what the off-season's for, isn't it? We'll start yeah. building that up again. Yeah, definitely. Because we are two weeks in now, aren't we? Two weeks into the off-season. Yeah. How have you mm-hmm. found the transition back into that from a training point of view? Ooh. So last Thursday, so I started last Monday, mm. like 1st of November, and uh, last Thursday, I was I woke up like I just don't know if I can make it to the end of this six, these six months. Like oh, <laughs> I could hardly walk. <laughs> it was awful. And I went to the the uh, physio, and she was like, she because normally when I like get to hers, she moves all my arms to make sure that we've got all like range of movements mm. and it's all spot on she moved, just she only moved like one arm up to like 90 degrees and she's like okay we'll just do a massage today <laughs> 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 but um this second week is so much better like yeah. today this last week we were squatting like front squatting about 40 kilograms just was like super light to mm. start with and then I think we added like 15 kilograms today which is just after a week is silly but I think it is just yeah. that thing where I'm not as sore as I, I was last week and yeah. a lot more refreshed so well, that's the thing isn't it? it's just almost that shock to your system again your body's just a bit like we've not been doing this for a while what's going on and there is going to yeah. be that, those doms for that first week but especially for someone as conditioned and as well trained as yourself like it's going to get back into the swing of it so quickly that it's not a surprise yeah. that this week doms haven't been half as bad and strength flying up already no, it's crazy. Last week, though, oh. <laughs> Don't want to like think I, about it. I could do pull-ups on the Monday, and I got to Thursday, and I couldn't do one. And I had to use like, one of those black band things to do them. It's yeah. just awful. <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing. You know, you like, and like the guys were using like 25 kilogram dumbbells to do lunges. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to have to go for fives. <laughs> was so that bad. in the actual CrossFit gym then? Was that in one of the classes? Yeah, so we're doing, Chris has started this 10 a.m. club mm. where it's, we go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Mm. And anyone's allowed to join. Um, and he's pretty much, he, he sets out the training session and then he like individualizes it to me and my back, my ride in. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But it's pretty much, he sets it up so we can all do it together, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Because yeah. initially with COVID, I was literally doing every session on my own. Yeah. Which I don't really know how I was doing it. It's... <laughs> Again, it's just, it's that athlete mindset, isn't it? You just sort of, you don't think yeah. about it. You just crack on. You just do it, don't you? Yeah. Um, so it's quite nice to train with people next to you. So, mm. so that's good. But yeah, it's. Uh, so has Chris just expanded out to Ilkley or is he expanding out to Ilkley with the gym? I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to say. All so. right, fair. <laughs> fair. I saw, I saw. <laughs> It was definitely something on social media about 
yeah. something in Ilkley coming up. I think that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. But that, that's yeah. it. S- secrecy at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't, because obviously I'll have lots of information that he's probably told me. Mm. Although he tells me things knowing that I'll forget. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, have a, whatever's on Instagram is what we can share. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. No, that was just, yeah, that was something that I, th- I can't remember when I saw it. I think it was last week at something that popped up. So, Whatever it is, he's very excited about it. So yeah, that'd be yeah. cool. Looking yeah. forward to that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we, I won't take up any more of your time. We'll we'll leave it there for today. Um, cool. But thank you very much for coming on. Before you do leave, anyone who wants to follow you, keep up to date with your races and your season progress, where can they find you? Um. I'm only on Instagram and it's uh, kj.sharp. Nice simple. and easy. <laughs> <laughs> so That's simple. a nice easy tag for people to remember. Yeah. <laughs> so before we go, I always ask this of everyone that comes on, can you leave someone or can you leave us with something inspirational? If someone's struggling right now, whether it's to work towards their goals or motivation to train or anything, can you give them some inspirational advice putting you on the spot right now? <laughs> I think I would just, if I was talking to myself, I'd be like, just put the cinnamon roll down. <laughs> <laughs> if that helps, then there you go. <laughs> just put the cinnamon roll down. I love it. That's brilliant. <laughs> okay, so wicked. Good. Right, we'll, we'll leave it there then, KJ, and enjoy the rest of your day. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye-bye.